Microservices technology is a new pattern of software engineering that has been popularized recently. In this video, we will explain what microservices are, their pros, their cons, by example, coming up. What's up, y'all? This is Hussein Nasser from IGM3, where we discuss software engineering by example. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Hussein, and uh, in this channel, we discuss software engineering and uh, any topic that particularly interesting in, interests me in software engineering. We have tutorials, we have programming, we talk about anything software engineering that particularly interests me. With that said, let's just jump into the video. A lot of companies have moved. Uh, in the early 2010, 2009-ish, such as like Twitter and Netflix to this microservices architecture. And uh, it is a pattern where you can break down big applications, big services, like like the sits like in, runs on one port, right? Into smaller mini services and what previously is now a uh, what it was previously just a method call you call a method function right hello world is now essentially a network call over git or uh, post or uh, through http or other protocols so so that's the breaking down of what microservice definition is with that said let's just jump and explain that uh, architecture by example so what do we have here is let's in order to explain microservices right we really need to explain how uh just the traditionally how did you how did we traditionally do things right so like let's just do a quick refresher so traditionally what we did is we uh we have a client this thingy here right and then we will build a rest server right we will build uh some routes like slash like uh, let's say this is an example where I'm viewing my Instagram pictures, okay? And uh, I built an API, REST API, where I have a slash picture, slash one, blob, return me the actual picture, uh, slash pic slash one, slash comments, give, return me the comments on that picture, slash likes, give me the, essentially, the likes on that picture, and so on, right? And all of this is sitting on this box that is called, is a machine called server one, and it's running on port 8080, and then each request, hits the database at the back end, okay? Well, that's a classical way of doing things. Nothing wrong with that, right? There are certain patterns that were discovered that this architecture can break down, especially in Twitter, we'll come to that. All right, and then, so so let's break down how, how this server looks like, right? Uh, traditionally, this is how it looks like, right? So it's a bunch of code running in one application, could be Node.js, could be PHP, right? Any application. Like Rails, and uh, if if the if the if the response or the request comes in the slash comments, you would call a method literally called good comments, and then pass in the the picture ID or whatever, and then that will essentially hit the database at the back end, retrieve the result, compile it to JSON, whatever the response format, and then return it back to the client. Get likes. We'll do the same thing. You call a function that is literally sitting there right it's a function call and then that's all right so, so that's essentially a very simple model a lot of people use it right and and uh, so we'll, we'll explain what what could go wrong with that and what you do with a microservices architecture is essentially you would break down these into mini services right and instead of having the comments as a function, you would put the comments as a as its own service. As you you can you can you're, you're like building your own REST endpoint, right? So let's see how it looks like. So this is how 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 very simply, and we're not talking about containers or anything, right? Here, just very simply, how you do it today. You can do it without containers. Like let's not confuse these two things together. Containers make microservices work better, but you don't have to use them. Okay, so uh, this is the client didn't change anything. It's still calling picture, give me the picture one, give me comments, give me likes, and then it will go here. And then the server here, this server one, 8080, will do some magic, all right? And it will say, huh, you're trying to hit the blob rest endpoint, but I think it is on this server. It is this server, that's server two, that is running on port 2222, right? Could be any other service right and then you will essentially this server will route this call to this server and then that's the beauty of this thing right look at that 
you could have since it's a it's an entire service you can have your own database this could be mongodb this could be mysql postgres it depends on on this team quote unquote team right this blob team or the pictures team that the image they can store this image in into s3 or anything right now suddenly we have freedom freedom yes all right and then what we do is like essentially this this call will go to the database and then comes back and then returns the result and this communication here right here is it through pure http or http2 or G grpc or these protocols that communicate this now instead of having libraries like you have dlls in case of windows or just binaries in case of any other language you put it in this application now you just separated those two right same thing with the comments right you you want to call comments and we will discover focus on this word discover which service is running the comment stuff and then we'll forward that to the server three 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 and then and so on okay and then that server three which is now running on 333 is hosting the comments api which will have its could have its own database right it could be the same database right it's just like but that's the beauty of this like now it's everyone have their own kind of freedom to express and build this technology their own stuff right uh in in, in their own way okay same thing with the likes right you get the idea so the first thing you notice here is this thing right here now becomes kind of like a reverse proxy if you think about it right but and we talked about reverse proxy versus proxy here i'm gonna reference the card here but it also acts like there is other stuff going on here right and this is very simple obviously architecture you need load balancers you need all the kind of stuff i'm i just removed all this just to explain the basic concept but essentially you you will have load balancers in front of each of all those guys and you will just front the load balancers essentially right and then this is the beauty of this this server will communicate to something called a service discovery to discover this services all right that's a very important part so you'll have to write another piece or just have use something that is out there to discover these services okay which will literally tell you that hey if you're looking for the blob service it is running on this ip address slash this port or it could be this ip address you have you can have multiple you can have multiple ones right and those will call your own database okay and uh that's basically what a microservices is. So it's very simple to the start to the point, and then we will we'll, let's let's jump and talk about the benefits, the pros and cons. So the pros, the first thing, the best thing ever is a polyglot architecture. What does that mean? Polyglot architecture means those guys now, each one of those, right? In the previous way. All of this code is written in one language, obviously, guys, right? Because you cannot write this function in Go and this function in, in, in JavaScript, right? This is, it's one code. It's one code running, right? So you, if you're joining this, this team or this company, you have to learn whatever language this is and then join with this thing. Here, microservices, if you're building a new microservices team, pick any language you like. We don't really care. And the beauty of this, because as long as you expose everything to beautiful HTTP, right? HTTP, I'm sorry. All right. Once you expose everything into HTTP, what you do is, that's it. I call your file method and the back end, you do your business, you do your thing, you choose your own database, you choose anything you want, you choose any language you want. And that's the beauty of this. It can scale really quickly, right? Polyglot architecture. Easy scaling for microservices that need scaling. So what does that mean? Okay, so here, right, and then this is what happened to Twitter. Remember in the World Cup, guys, the World Cup of two thousand and ten, I think. Yeah, World Cup of two thousand and ten. Uh, it was really crazy. Remember, like whenever someone tweets, 
right? That soccer world, and everyone somewhere, Twitch, Twitter will go down, right? And then uh, I think uh, his name is William Morgan, the the architect back then in Twitter, and he said it looks like literally we, what we were doing is like we have this huge application, the Rail application. They were literally copying and pasting these VMs, but the VMs couldn't keep up because it's a huge application to run. It takes time, right? It's it, to scale this. How do you scale this application? You have to literally make, make multiple copies and put it behind load balancer but even though that wasn't enough for twitter they would they could not catch up because the tweets were the busiest thing right and that point and but what happened here is the entire application were unnecessarily being scaled all right with the microservice architecture you will notice that hey the comments api is getting a lot of love right so get it love <laughs> You can love a comment, I think, in, in Instagram. Yeah, and, and YouTube. So yeah, it's good. comments API are getting a lot of love. Let's scale this only these babies, all right? We're gonna scale these puppies, scale them up, duplicate them, and we can leave the rest of the applications good. And we can scale really quickly because it's a very small application. It's a micro service. It's a service, it's a very micro, small service that can quickly spin up, right? And then, whether you spin up, decide to spin up as a multiple machine, as a multiple VM, or as a container, which is the most beautiful thing ever, right? Because now it's a, it's a container, it's a small thing, just spin up container, spin up, spin up, spin up, and so on. And then comments database, right? All right. Easier to innovate in certain areas. Now, what we have is, like, now that we have just separated everything, we can easily, like, fix and innovate and, and, and enhance certain APIs without breaking the rest of the application, right? So now let's say I want to add uh, a new feature to the comments. Let's say the comments, I want to add uh, a co option to to do a like, a like on the comments, right? So to do that, you will, you can you can introduce all of this here, right? Without affecting the rest of the application. Coolish stuff, right guys? Pretty coolish. Each microservice can pick up their own database. We talked about this, right? <laughs> this could be Postgres, this could be SQL Server, because this could be, uh, I don't know, Azure, S3, anything you want. That's the beauty of this. Where, where here, you are kind of stuck with a, whatever database, the monolith. This is, by the way, called monolith, right? It's a huge application. All right, cons, is this perfect? No, nothing perfect in life, guys. This is a, this is just, uh, you just, do it whatever you have. It's like, okay, this this was really deep, really quick. <laughs> All right, cons, very complicated to implement, All right? There are network calls, there are service discoveries now. The, ooh, obviously, this is not as easy as it looks, right, guys? I made it so easy, but to implement this, it's a sucker, right? To implement this, you have to basically write uh, what was like essentially just a call to a function get comments right just return of values and you know that function this will never fail unless the database is down or whatever right but the function will not fail because of of i don't know like uh cosmic ray right it will it will not fail function calls never fail right you don't you you're trusted in this but here Guess what? It will fail. This network call can fail. This server can go down. This, I don't know, network latency. I don't know, an earthquake happening somewhere. Fiber cable get cut. Who knows, right? But you can essentially, these calls can fail. So you, because they could fail, you have to account for them, right? And not only that, right? So uh, you can you have to account for them, and you have to retry, and and you have to implement some kind of retries and circuit breaking case. Like if you keep calling methods, you have to at least give up after a certain point, right? If especially if uh, I, again, this is very simple, right? But this microservice can call another microservice as well. Right. This is not just like linear, just like explaining. Like you can have this microservice calls another microservice, and so it, there's a dependency tree. Right. Complicated stuff. Service discovery. Obviously, you have to implement this thing you which you never had. 
you have to discover the service. Where is my comments? Where is my picture API? Where is my blob API? Where is my likes API? Very difficult to debug. No. Shit, sure. Look, <laughs> can you imagine, guys? This is really hard to debug. Like, let's say you have a failure, right? And the, you don't even know if it's a comment API. If this is like you call a method, especially if it's a function calling another method, another microservice, you would fail somewhere in the stack, and you will have no idea where it failed. So you have to set to implement some sort of a distributed tracing, which gets into really really complicated stuff guys hard to find where the fault is obviously right it's like if you make a call here it goes to the likes method right and then this goes to the is it the database is it likes or is this some some other api where fail so it's really hard to find where the uh, where the fault is right and network calls just as and as more and more latencies and complexities and you have to implement all that stuff obviously guys there is there is a lot of innovation going there there is the service mesh going on top of that like linkerd and all these uh, good good services that we're going to talk about this beautiful technology i am just love this service mesh whoever came up with this sidecar pattern is a genius and uh, I'm gonna talk about it in another video but essentially this makes things a little bit easier to discover and do things like proxying all the call, call stuff all right guys well that's it uh, I, I hope I, I, I might have missed something so if I did I, I know you're gonna tell me in the comment section that I have missed something or I said something that is not potentially correct but uh, Tell me in the comment section. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like and subscribe to check out other software engineering content in this channel. I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome.